Ben 10 Destroy All Aliens is one of the most forgotten pieces of the Ben 10 franchise. After rewatching it, I can definitely see why. It isn't really bad, but it's not particularly great or anything like that. The novelty comes from seeing the classic series translated into 3D CGI. That novelty wears off pretty quickly, if I'm being honest. But it was great to get the original cast back after UAF. Everyone sounds like they are supposed to again. Why didn't I turn human? And all the aliens look right, except for way big, I guess. This was definitely meant to remind people of classic before Omniverse used the younger versions of these characters again. Okay, so the plot revolves around the Omnitrix both sucking stuff into itself and turning people into the wrong species. This comes after Gwen zaps upgrade with a magic spell. For instance, Azmuth is turned into a Toku star and then Azmuth's dad shows up to find him. He's wearing galvanic mechamorph armor for some reason and it's really just one big misunderstanding. I hate when stories could be easily resolved just by characters talking it out, you know? Why do Ben 10 movies keep introducing the most complicated plots possible? Anyway, this isn't really bad, but I wouldn't recommend it either. I'd say check it out if you love Ben 10 classic and you just want more. Ben 10, destroy all aliens. It was alright. It was kind of confusing though. He said the thing at one point. I will destroy all aliens! What the? Didn't work for me, I don't think. It was pissing me off that for three quarters of the movie, I didn't know what was going on. It was a good mystery, wasn't it? No, it was a very frustrating mystery that made no sense. I don't think you had all the pieces to, to figure out what was supposed to be going on. Exactly. So I was just like, every time I turn around, I'd be like, Hopper, what is going on? <laughs> I, just I remember I asked you, I said, uh, I said, who's the main villain of this? We're 30 minutes into this point. <laughs> and you said, it's a spoiler. And I was like, well, I feel like I should know by now. <laughs> uh, it was a blue upgrade guy. It was okay. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have picked, if I was writing this, I would probably personally wouldn't have picked uh, uh, upgrade, or, uh, Azimuth's dad. Yeah. But it's okay, I guess. It's not, it's not bad. Yeah. It's just, give me some more to go off of so I can reach the, the conclusions. You know what I mean? You got there like five minutes before they told you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> and I, it's not because I'm an idiot. Yeah. It's because you didn't give me enough to go off of. Yeah. So ultimately, I think the, the novelty comes from it being a CGI Ben 10 movie. Right. Like, that's what you're supposed to just care about. Yeah. This came way after the original series ended, so it was sort of a novelty to have. Yeah. Megan Smith back as Gwen, uh, Tara Strong doing the Ben voice again. We got Grandpa Max Pop, uh, Paul Eiding, but he's always doing it. He's yeah. Like, Every time. But um, we get original Azmuth, which is his only second, only ever appearance. Yeah, it's very interesting that they bring him back, even though they have a new Azmuth voice for yeah. Alien Force yeah. by the time this comes out. This felt like it may have like resided in like a comic book universe or something. Yeah. Like, maybe this is the end of the comic book summer, and yeah. we're getting like a continuation on that storyline or something, because it doesn't feel like classic, specifically. Yeah, it's so funny, because at the very beginning, Ben goes, this is it's hero time, I guess, and Grandpa Max like, nope, not on a school night, and he's like, <laughs> and I'm like... What are you doing chasing this thing down in the first place then? Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you have him out here if not to go hero? Honestly, Gwen is super OP in this too. Like she Gwen is run. an annoying little... <laughs> you know? If you two wouldn't let, would let me say it, I would. I, I would say it. You know? <laughs> um, no, Gwen is so annoying. Especially in the beginning, upgrade is the logical choice to go. Yeah. And Gwen's like, no, my magic. <laughs> mm. Look at my magic. She ultimately does win though. She gets the thing, you know. He could have though, <laughs> if she'd given him time. He upgraded it and it, like upgraded it more, get more guns and stuff. Yeah, on it. but he was gonna like get rid of it. I suppose. Cause he was in control. I suppose. You know. Did you like it? What do you think? It was fun. It's it was better fun. than uh, Race Against Time. Better than Race Against Time. I think we're we're one for three on the Benton movies. Yeah, Secret of the Omnitrix just goes so hard. Yeah, it does. And this one's not bad. I would no, say it's this probably would be the like, second best of the three. Which is not saying much. It's not. <laughs> it's not a lot of competition. Uh, but it's not terrible. I would say maybe mid. You know, yeah. Mid to, mid it looked to, like a PlayStation yeah. 2 video game cutscene. Yeah, it was sort of look like a like you ever see those. Sometimes you'll see like an offshoot like Chinese cartoon or like a yeah. CGI cartoon of like something made in Korea or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why it just felt like that for some reason. Yeah. My name is Hopper. And I'm um, Steven. And you may or may not know this is our last episode of the Ben 10 Classic Rewatch. Uh, we reviewed every single episode. <laughs> Of the show, how do you feel? It's a wild ride, pretty wild ride. I feel, I feel, I feel accomplished. You know, yeah. Kind of, kind of snore getting through this movie, but we made it. You know, we got. We here. really, well, we took a nap after watching. It. <laughs> Straight up, I had to get arrested. Yeah, just sleepy. You can tell I got bedhead and all kinds of. I just, I'm, I, get, I was gonna say bags in my eyes. I'm just ugly. Not the same. <laughs> you gave me the ugly. <laughs> Looking at you, Benson Classic. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of things we got to owe our channel to Classic a little bit. We got ten thousand subs. We got. Great community going. We got like you know just a, a good time on YouTube. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, not all to thank for Benson Classic, but a lot of that is due to this rewatching. You know? Absolutely. 
So we're going to uh, put up a poll. It's up right now. If you go to our community tab, you can either vote Teen Titans option, and there's also an Alien Force option. Uh, so we'll do whatever y'all say. We're here for you, and we want to watch both of them. We probably will go through every episode of those shows individually. Eventually. Eventually. But uh, just right now, since you know we're, we're doing one rewatch at a time, we'll figure we'd see what y'all want us to do. Yeah, absolutely. So go check out those polls. All right, let's dive a little deeper into Destroy All Aliens. Don't like the name of it. Yeah, the name's a little... It feels like that... Uh, Benton Destroy All Aliens. Why? It feels like... Yeah, the, the whole Omnitrix is like meant to sow peace among the universe and help yeah. aliens get to know each other and... We'll destroy all aliens, yeah. you know? Why is an alien saying aliens, too? You know yeah, I mean? he kept saying that. He kept... Uh, Asmund's dad kept being like, we're... You're how many alien? aliens are on this planet? Yeah, you alien hit squad on that watch? <laughs> Bro, you, you claim that you're Asmus's son. Yeah. And you haven't heard of the Omnitrix. Do you think Azmuth's dad has a name, or they just said, this is Azmuth's dad? I bet you there was a pop-up trivia. I don't think they did pop-up, because this came way His after. His name is Gary. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Dadsmith. That's yeah, the, that's, the, that's the popular fan name, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. I like that. Um, no, he was a uh, evil upgrade. Upgrade's always been a little underutilized. It's kind of good to see, like, what a real mechamorph can do. He's not re- He's not a real mechamorph. No, he's not a real he's mechamorph. A that was an armor. Yeah, it was like a little square box that thing. made you like write it out. Roid rage. Yeah, for some reason it gave you like. Did, can any can any species wear that, or is it just the Galvans? Oh, good good question. Because it's like a small little box, so he figured maybe it's Galvan sized, but it turns yeah. him into like pretty much a full length gal, uh, galvanic mechamorph. What made me so angry too is like at the end Ben's like, "That's your dad. He looks younger than you. Why is that?" And he goes, "You got a <laughs> lot to learn about uh, Galvans. Galvans." And he and I'm looking at you like, d- d- "Okay, tell him." <laughs> I, to my tell theory, him what it is. My theory, and I think other people have the same theory, is that he put his brain into the young, the body of like a younger Azmuth or uh, uh, Galvin, because maybe like you get to a point where like because Galvins live forever, like they pretty yeah. much live for thousands of years. Because we see that with Azmuth especially. Mm-hmm. So maybe like maybe over time they just have to like re up their body and like put their brain into a new consciousness. Or Interesting. Whatever. Put their consciousness into a new body. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, young young dad Azmuth is weird. It is. I don't like it. Yeah. Plus, Ben pretty much looks like that, and he's a ten-year-old. So, like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's you know, scale to ten. Could be like a Benjamin Button disease. Maybe so a whole race of Benjamin Buttons. Yeah. Ugh. That'd be wild. <laughs> um, I did like. There was a point in the in the movie where like uh, Ben's Omnitrix was just turning him into different aliens at a time. Mm-hmm. He couldn't turn back human. I thought that was a fun idea. That was sort of like they gave me hints of um, secrets and also yeah. the uh, the one where he gets uh, full control. Master um, control. Master Season control. two finale. Yeah, I forget what it was called, but the Kevin and Vilgax team up mm-hmm. one. It's kind of like, okay, good. We're getting to see all of his aliens mixed up. We didn't get Rip Jaws. Yeah. We didn't get Rip Jaws. Was there anybody else we didn't really get? We didn't get the, rather the negative, the original uh, 10 aliens. Accelerate. Accelerate. Dude, why was Accelerate not here? I don't know. He wasn't in Race Against Time either. My boy needs some, because he's like a popular alien too. Yeah. Like he's like a lot of people's favorite aliens. Is he the only one we didn't get besides Rip Jaws? We didn't get Rip Jaws and Accelerate. Ghost Freak, but he's not in the watch no, anymore. No, I wouldn't count Ghost I guess he is in the watch, but he's not, yeah. you know, Ben's not using him. That's got to be the only two we didn't get, right? Oh, he didn't turn into Wild Mutt. We got Wild Mutt in this though. But he didn't turn into it. Probably. I think you're right, yeah. But he's so he's in the dream sequence and one of the parents gets turned into him. Yeah, but he didn't turn yeah. into it. Sad day. Sad day. I would have liked to see Cannon Bolt in this style. I think yes, it would probably work dude, better. that would have been cool. Uh, do, you think, do you think the style is okay? Do you like the way it looks? Not really. Not particularly? No. I think I think we've kind of come down on the idea just, that... Just stick to the cartoon. Yeah, but it's. I think that's cheaper to do the 3D thing like this. Oh, for sure. I can um, totally tell, too. <laughs> you know? It does, it does feel like a disservice almost because the city was just empty at the yeah. end of the movie. And my question is, too, like, if it's cheaper to do this, mm-hmm. why even do it at all since this is past... The Ben Singh Classic, right? So the only reason to do this was to get fans like, hey, this is an honor of you fans for sticking out and stuff. But then you give us kind of a half-assed thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think like, why someone, do it at all? I think someone came to uh, Cartoon Network with this because there's a short film online that you can watch on YouTube. Uh, but it's it's essentially Ben and Gwen like, with a little rope around them. And it's just kind of them you know, seeing if this works in 3D. Yeah. I think they pitched that to Cartoon Network. With, hey, look, it works. It probably won't be too expensive. I think... Part of it was because Ben Ten, Young Ben Ten, is in Omniverse. Yeah, I think they were kind of like, let's reintroduce fans to Young Ben before we have the Young Ben in Omniverse, along with the sixteen-year-old Ben from UA. Yeah. F. That'd be an interesting theory. So I think, but then like, just give us an Omniverse. Just start Omniverse with a movie. Yeah, and, like, do it really high budget, really like amazing. Just, yeah, put some work into it. Yeah, yeah, make make it look really good and just have that going and start off your series that way, as opposed to 
Because Omniverse, I'm pretty sure we knew that was going to be a hit in the first place. Like, it's the longest running Ben 10 series. And was it a hit? Yeah, it was a hit. People liked it. They, Cartoon Network actually sabotaged it. They put it like they, they put it like new episodes in like 6 a.m. or something, like early really? morning time slots. No one watched. Wow. Sucks. They just were trying to kill Ben 10, I think. Why? I don't know. If you've got a long running season that sells toys, keep it on the air for as long as possible. Yeah. I don't know why they did that. Yeah. Anyway, back to this movie though. <laughs> uh, Gwen, Gwen's really OP in this. She does like a yeah, she does a lot. She does a tracker spell from Alien Force. She does a teleportation spell at one point. I don't know that I buy Gwen being this powerful. If this is main canon, I don't yeah, know that I buy. Yeah, ten years old. Because she, I mean, she that comes way later. That yeah. comes like when she figures out she's an and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're even here. He's like, uh, it was just teeming with mana energy. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what? And he's like, oh, they haven't told you yet. Okay, t- tell her. Say something. Asmuth's like, no, I don't like having. Secrets, <laughs> you know. I love this version of Azmuth. I think he's so funny. He's like a little. Uh, he's, he's Jewish. He's, yeah, he's a little Jewish guy, a little Jewish frog. So I schlepped myself all the way to Earth to defrag the Omnitrix. I schlepped all the way down here. It's like okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even catch that. I was laughing. I was like, how much? How much more George Lucas could they make this? You know what I mean? What's wild too is like, why did he send Tetrax? I don't know. He wanted Tetrax to meet up with him or something. But for what reason? Yeah, Tetrax didn't really need to be there. I guess the, te- the, the, the plot doesn't kick off unless Tetrax brings Ben to Azmuth. But Azmuth could just show up at Ben's house. Yeah, he totally could. I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. He could have also told Ben that he was coming. Yeah. I guess at this point, though, it's it's fair that... Because um, at the end of Secret also of the Also, just Tricks, teleport. Your, your dad can teleport. Why can't you teleport? That's what I was going to say. Is like Maybe Azmuth hadn't really figured out like a way of personal like teleportation yet. Yeah. Maybe that came in the five years in between classic and, and alien force so maybe but he, his dad was using teleportation yeah but his dad was also like roided up and on the the upgrade meth or whatever it was yeah but when azimuth used it he wasn't roided up i guess he's more in control I don't, exactly I don't so know. he could have teleported <laughs> yeah good fair good point. which is just a nitpicky thing but maybe just, he just wanted to fly wanted to like take I, some time i love that we had tetrax but i'm acknowledging the fact that he served no purpose in this movie yeah also give us gluto for getting tetrax the two come as a pair now that's what i was thinking he was in the ship and i was like gluto you hiding, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> maybe after he got like killed and reassembled so many times off of Gwen's clothes, maybe he's like, I'm going home for uh, a yeah, vacation. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to take myself a nice six-year vacation or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, Tetrax is good. To be, it's good to see him again, like, like we're saying. He's one of my favorite like, side characters. Yeah. And I do wish he had more play. Like, I wish he was in the main cast. Like, I wish he was just hanging out with Ben. Like, especially about Omniverse. Yeah. Like, I don't think he even gets... I, that's the thing, too. Is, like, Ben gets um, a, a buddy, that blue dude. Rook. Rook. Mm. Why wasn't it Tetrax? I think I like what they did with Omniverse. Don't get me wrong, um, but honestly, even Alien Force, like have you know, have him there because yeah. they need help doing the D- DNA. Does he Alien show thing. up at all during Alien Force? Uh, he shows up. Does he show up for DNA Aliens? The big fight? No, See? no, he doesn't. He Waste. shows up. He shows up when Ben has a cold and they get Sugalite to bring back Petropia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's UA or AF, but that's one I of the think two. That's UA. It's either th- season three of Alien Force or uh, yeah, because no, 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 it's totally get Diamond Head back. It's totally season three because they beat Vilgax with Diamond Head. Oh, you're right. And then once he unlocks, because they he he like tears apart uh, Chromastone. Yeah, Vilgax does, and then he comes back as Diamond Head. Yeah, and then that's he has Diamond Head in the watch, and that's why Tetrax comes back for him. Yeah, interesting stuff there. That's a real that's a comic booky plot line, isn't it? Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. I love seeing aliens in 3D. I think that's a great look for these aliens for most of them. Stinkfly, I think, looks perfect. Yeah. Uh, Heat Blast looks a little wonky. Heat Blast looks good. His fire effects look weird. I didn't like Heat Blast. I did like Diamond Head, and I liked Upgrade. Diamond Head, you said, looked like a shark. He did. It was cool. Okay. I didn't know if that was an insult or a no, no, praise. No, no. I was like, ooh, you look like a shark. He's a shark. Cool. <laughs> Uh, what else? We got way big is a big part of this. That was cool. It's always cool to see yeah. way big. What they, what was his alien name? Uh, uh, Toku Star. Yeah, yeah, that's a reference to the the Japanese name for um. Uh, this guy Ultraman. Ultraman. Yeah. yeah. Um, Toku Sato or something. The the lore behind Toku Stars, right? Well, in the game Cosmic Destruction, I think yeah. is what it's called. One of the Alien Force games. They expand on the fact that uh, Toku stars are born from cosmic storms. Yeah. So there's so, not like a whole race of them. They're like... Yeah. They're kind of once... They're like galactuses. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, like the universe is like every once in a while we'll have a storm that produces a being. Which is so sick. So sick. I love so that, So sick, dude. Also, another fun point to uh, point out, um, this is the alien force model of yeah. Way Big. And I think that's because like Kuro... I noticed from, that. Yeah. Yeah. Kuro said that he thinks it's just a rip from the, from the ink tank. 
he said he thinks it's just a rip straight from that game. Like the model just came oh, exactly from that yeah. game. That's so cool. maybe, you know, maybe. Yeah. Azimuth's uh, blue and black one goes so hard. Oh, yeah, he looked great. That was like a almost a way bad design yeah, yeah. Like from the from the later seasons where they have like the mutated way bigs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I love, uh, dude. Way big is so much fun. I yeah. love the fact that Ben just has a big kaiju in his in his watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Want more kaiju's? Yeah, dude. I mean, Humongosaur is reaching that level, but he's not really. Yeah, he doesn't really get there. You we know? love Humongosaur. On this we channel. love him. I know he's some people best. don't like him, but we like him. Yeah, we love. Do you actually like Humongosaur? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like him. I, I like him. Humongous. I liked him a lot more before they like overused him. That was thing. Ben's favorite thing. That's the thing. I love uh, Armadillo more than Humongosaur. Why? Why do you, why do you got to compare two legends like that? You know. I love Armadillo. <laughs> he's not. Any di- he's but he's different though. He's not as big. He as can Humongous punch. Humongous. You know what I mean. He can like hit the ground. He can pound the ground. Yeah. He can pound you too, just like that. Not <laughs> like that. <laughs> just shut your mouth. You watch your words. <laughs> there. <laughs> Um, there's really not a lot to say with Destroy All Aliens, is there? It's, it's very, um, fast. I don't know if you noticed that, but, like, the first, like, when I'm first watching it, right? Yeah. Um, everything just seems to happen instantaneously. Yeah. Like, it, it feels like I'm getting whiplash by how fast everything's moving. It's more, like, slapsticky almost. Yeah. Would you say? Like, the original show was not really that slapsticky. There was slapstick moments, but, like, everything... And this feels like it's way more movement yeah. forward. Like That's what I'm saying. Focused, I yeah. physically felt like we were watching it on two speed with how fast everything was mm, moving. Yeah. Like how, like jumping from point to point to point to point. Yeah. Like when he got into, they were like, oh, we can put you in the locker. He's in the locker. Oh, yeah. he's out of the locker. Now he's flying away. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all of that happened within the span of about 30 seconds, it felt like. Yeah, that's true. I do think, um, I do think that's just the uh, form of the, or I think that, I think that comes from the CGI because you get the more expressive kind of movements. You can yeah. kind of rig them without having to do like animation cell by cell, frame by frame kind of thing. Yeah. So I do think that probably was the case, which I think sort of helped it. It, it flowed. No, yeah. It was just like it was going. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, there was like energy there, chaotic energy. Yeah, I can see that. It, you know? I don't, I don't dislike it, the movie. Yeah. Or no, I like animation, the movie. Whatever. I was just really mad, dude, the whole time. <laughs> Because I just didn't know what was going on. And there I felt was like lot, it was taking too long to tell me. A lot going on. And they were like... like I didn't like that the Omnitrix was like sucking stuff into it. Yeah. Which I guess makes sense because it already like takes in It would matter. make sense if it was DNA-based stuff. But yeah. when you took like the homework and the laptop... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if he was like petting his dog and his dog disappeared. Sure. That makes more sense. Or when he sh- or he goes to give the homework to the, the teacher and then the teacher disappears. Ooh, you know what I mean? That's a bigger deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, but person. it makes more sense. The Omnitrix is DNA-based. Yeah. Why are you taking a piece of paper? It does make clothes for him. Like it turns, you know, it makes clothes. Yeah. One of the one of the creators, I forget. I think it's Derek, Derek J. Wyatt. He said like the Omnitrix creates matter and destroys it whenever whenever they get rid of the clothes. I think he was joking. But that's I was gonna say matter can neither be <laughs> created nor destroyed. But this is the Omnitrix, baby. I don't give up. <laughs> the Omnitrix does not defy the laws of the, the universe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I um yeah, there's not much more really to say. Honestly, mm-hmm. I I think uh, the locations were fun. We got to see a couple different locations. They go to Brazil to just leave. They see the Jesus set, the big Jesus. Yeah. Um, Alan, I think you mean Christ the Redeemer, dude. <laughs> Do you like the Stonehenge stuff, where they're fighting Stonehenge? Oh yeah. So he says like um everyone can tell that's just a uh, Galvin practical joke, and then like oh is this one too? And he points at the pyramids. He goes no, this is obviously Tetra. Tetra man's. Tetra yeah. man's work. Which I think it's. They say in Omniverse that Blue Kitchen Dreva, some of the two of the Galvins there, created the pyramids. Really? <laughs> so that's sort of an inconsistency. This isn't yeah. probably canon. No, I doubt it. Even if it is canon, it doesn't really affect much. No. I tell you what it affects. It affects the fact that uh, G- uh, Max and Azmuth never met. Yeah. I think that in I think I think in Omniverse, maybe Alien Force, they know each other pretty well. Granted, those series are after classic, so they, yeah. it, it could line up, you know. But yeah. I don't I don't know that for a fact. Yeah. And Asma too was a hermit for several years, so it makes sense that like he wouldn't have met Max. And by several years, we mean like centuries. At least a couple hundred years. Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would assume. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Which is technically several years. You're not wrong. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like that guy who's like Napoleon De- Bonaparte died over sixty years ago, and it's like, well, yeah, but you don't know. say that. <laughs> yeah, you could be more specific. I don't like that you've said that. You're technically correct. But yeah. Come on. Yeah. The aliens looked okay, though. I, I wouldn't say they they look way better than Race Against Time, obviously. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Wild Mutt still looks a little funky. Yeah, but we had the original voices too for him. Yes, so. that went a long way. Like he yeah, had forearms talk. Like, forearms, yes. uh, even like Diamond Head and stuff. Like Tetrax comes back. Mm-hmm. Like even like Gwen. Gwen's voice is it's a little bit deeper than it was in the classic. Yeah, you could tell she'd grown up a little bit. It's not a tank, doofus. Still Gwen. You yeah. can still hear Gwen in there, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't like that the villain was not really a villain. <laughs> yeah. 
he was just sort of a, a half. He was sort of a confused. Yeah. Like if, the, if Ben and if Ben and the, the bad guy just sort of talked, he's like, "I'm Ben Tennyson. I have the Omnitrix. I can't turn back into a human right now for some reason. Yeah. You need to you need to calm down. Quit shooting me with things. Shooting me with lasers and mm-hmm. missiles. That was a cool scene where Forearms gets the missiles and he's like, yeah, and he's like flying with them. Oh, that was so sick. Yeah. Stuff like that. More stuff like that would have Please. elevated this movie a lot more. Yes. Yes. But it is cool to see Upgrade get to do some stuff, too. Yeah. Can we talk about that? He's like, not the upgrade I wanted. Does that mean he doesn't have control over it? I don't know what you mean. Does, can he control what he upgrades stuff into or no? Oh, you know, that's I heard that, too. And I was like, mm, that makes no sense. Because when you upgrade, you do whatever you want with them. Yeah. There, there's never been a precedent before where he's tried to upgrade something and it turns into something he didn't want it to upgrade into. Never before. But yeah. I wonder I wonder if it's just like a set thing. Maybe it's like, because that machine was going haywire to begin. So it yeah. messed with him when he was interfacing with it. Could be. Could be. Also, what was going on with that machine? It was like a big tank. It like yeah, sliced the no cop ex- car in half. Yeah, it almost had like um, sentience when it would like look at you with yeah, the kinda. lasers. You yeah, kind of. And then they used to destroy it and it's like, so was that a government experiment gone wrong? Was that a bad guy? Oh, we get Dr. Animo at the end. <laughs> a massive ass frog in the that one. A huge frog. Yo, do you think he just like, that was his experiment of the day? It was like making frogs bigger? He's like, the whole time this movie's going on, he's tinkering. He's like, I'm going to have this big ass frog. Tennyson's never going to know what's coming. He's watching the news. He's like, Tennyson's destroyed Stonehenge. Yeah, Not he's, today. He's like, I'm almost done. <laughs> God, I love Dr. Animo so much. Yeah. I'm so glad we get a little peek at him in yeah. 3D. Yeah, I liked it. He had like that five o'clock shadow. It looks like he just rolled out of the trailer park. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wonder what. I wonder how he got to the Null Void. Because remember, he's like a big deal in the Null Void. They explain it, don't they? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Ben probably puts him there. What am I saying? Yeah. Probably just like, I'm sick of you, Animo. Get, <laughs> get the Null Void. I'm just excited for the next chapter in the channel. Whether yeah. Be it Alien Force or Teen Titans, I'm excited. I think we're looking forward to greener pastures. Yeah. Um, Not that Benton Classic wasn't good, but you do something for a year. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little repetitive, yeah. you know. Kind of. Which, if we do Alien Force, it's more Ben Ten, baby. Another year. Yeah, but at least you know it's a different era. We can have more stuff to talk about. Yeah, different for sure. stuff. Stuff we get mad about probably because it's not totally you know. Definitely. How it season was. three of Alien Force is definitely rough. Yeah, but the first two seasons, honestly, peak. Peak. So peak. Peak storytelling, dude. Yeah. You can have your your beefs with the aliens and stuff, but the 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 leap in a cohesive story from Benton Classic yeah. to Alien Force season one and two is just. Light years, you know. Speaking of the riders, there's a uh, there's a joke or there's a reference, I guess. They're they're like he's turning left at Pugsley Boulevard and Klein Avenue or whatever. Pugsley and Klein were like two of the bigger riders for uh, classic. Like they were oh, the really? of the episodes. That's so it's, cool. It's fun they, they kind of threw that in there. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, I'd give it about a seven. Yeah, six or seven. I think mm-hmm. it, it, it struggles a lot from... In the story perspective, it struggles a lot, but from visuals, I'm okay with it. I don't understand why Ben 10 movies are, like, have such a like fetish with just like overcomplicating everything. Yeah. It's like, why don't we just have like a good alien... Just make up a new villain. Mm-hmm. Villain. Villain. <laughs> and he's from space, and he comes down, and he's got little like guys for Ben to fight. There was no issue of Ben's watch like turning him into stuff, because we've already got the models. Yeah. So like, just have Ben turn into whoever you're going to have him turn into. Absolutely. Have the watch work fine. Yeah. How, how about that idea? Not hard to do. Shouldn't be hard to do. Just do Ben 10, but longer. <clears throat> yeah. Do a and ben I 10 don't know longer. why like, uh, Tetrix is like, no, you need to be an alien form at all times. What? Why? It's like, I thought it would protect him. He turns into gray matter at one point. What if he got squished? Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> why hate, don't you like gray matter? Hey, gray matter. Tell me more about that. What's wrong with gray matter? He's just the worst, dude. hate his little body. Useless. Why do you hate him? I kind of like him. Like he's him. cute. I don't like him. You don't like when he's like, hey, I'm Gray Matter, and I no. I'm actually the guy who plays Billy and Mandy. He's a dork. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. Did you like it? Have you seen it? I I've not seen this before. This was a big. I think that's the the hook of the video today. Is like Benton's forgotten CGI movie. Yeah. And it it was forgotten by me for sure. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know about this movie, but it's it's interesting, especially once you come back to it after. Like Alien Force and Omniverse and all this different stuff. It's like yeah. it's interest it's like a it's like a time capsule almost. Yeah. Kinda gets to look back at the classic show through a different lens, you know. For sure. So yeah, let us know what you guys think down in the comments down below. If you want to see more, like we said, we just wrapped up the Ben Ten Classic Every series. Episode. They'll be on the left side of your screen over there. If you want to see something that, you know, if we were to do Teen Titans, you could check out our invincible review over on the right side of your screen. Um and yeah, don't forget to vote in that poll and we will see you guys next week. Bye bye.